Hi, check this out. We've got three rechargeable D cells here, nickel metal hydride, old school, none of this newfangled lithium rubbish. We've got one from RS uh, Components here. RS don't manufacture it, of course. I'm not sure who actually manufactures this particular one. If you do, let us know. Anyway, we've got the Energizer rechargeable here, and we've got the Duracell, and they're supposed to be fairly identical, right? They're all rechargeable D cells, but... There's something weird going on here. This RS Components one, 8,000 milliamp hour, thank you very much. The Energizer, 2,500 milliamp hours, what the? And the Duracell, 2,200 milliamp hours, wow! It's like less than a third of the capacity of this RS Components one. What the heck's going on? But it gets even stranger, this D-cell one, 2200 milliamp hours, the exact same series in a C-cell is 3000 milliamp hours. How can this C-cell have greater capacity than this D-cell? Hey, my spidey sense says something weird going on here. And in addition to having them clearly marked on the batteries themselves in the data sheets, everything's legitimate, it's marked on the packaging, there it is, 2500 milliamp hours. So this seems very strange until you actually go to pick these up. This RS Components one feels really heavy and meaty and it goes thump when you drop it on the table. This Duracell one feels a bit wimpy and it's like meh. And this Energizer one is light as... And it, it, like, it's just piss weak. So what is the difference? Why are these different? Well, let's crack them apart and find out. Now, I could actually uh, get the gear out and do a proper discharge testing on these things to prove that they are 8,000 milliamp hours and 22 or 2,500 milliamp hours, but I have absolutely no doubt that they meet their data sheet claims, right? These aren't some weird Wang Hung Low brands. These are Turacell and Energizer. They've got full characteristic data sheets. So there's no point. These are legitimately less capacity than, uh, well, in this case, this RS Components one, but I think you can get a couple that are even higher capacity than the RS Components one. What is the difference? Hmm. So if we actually weigh this, the RS Components one, 162 grams. Energizer, 64. Duracell, <laughs> 78. And the C-Cell, 62. So it's, as you can see, there's hard, almost no difference between the Energizer D cell and the Duracell C cell. Look at that, nuts. So it's rather interesting that the Duracell at 2200 milliamp hours actually weighs more than the Energizer at 2500 milliamp hours. Hmm. Well, that's the outer wrapper off of the Energizer one, and it's like. Just some sort of plastic or polycarbonate case with a metal inner shell by the looks of it. So I'm going to try and dremel that away. Actually, I'm not even going to dremel that. I'm just going to get in there with the side cutters. Yes, they have uh, seen a bit of action, these side cutters. And it looks like this bottom plate might just, might just drop out of here. So that could be interesting. Let's just do that. First, hello. Yeah. Is that loosey goosey? Yep. That looks loosey goosey to me. Wah, 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 wah. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> There's a plastic. Look. <laughs> oh, ripped off. Absolutely ripped off. This D cell, look at all the <laughs> look at all the air in there. It's not even the full the cell inside is not even the full length. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, well done, Energizer. <laughs> so I I'm not gonna call it a scam because it does actually meet its rating. It's just that its rating is like less than this. C cell here. So of course it's going to be a physically smaller. Actually, look, it it's kind of maybe looks quite similar to the C cell actually. So I just tried to cut that open and I don't think I have to do that. 
I think that is just going to drop out, drop out of there. Ta-da! That is what's inside a <laughs> D cell. Look, it's less than the C cell. Wow! If you have a look at the energizer and the Duracell here, the bottom of it looks like the metal extends, the negative terminal extends all the way out, and it looks like this may actually be an all metal case as opposed to the um, energizer, which of course we've seen is all plastic case. So let's get crack this one open. And yep, you can see that the entire outer casing of the Duracell is metal, hence why it weighs more for less uh, capacity. And also, you've got to think about this because it might be an issue, say you had you know, something sharp that actually pierced through the outer uh, insulation on this thing, then it could potentially short out. Whereas the Energizer wouldn't do that because it's a plastic case all the way around. And given that, you know, these are reasonable capacity, they're capable of generating, you know, many amps into a uh, short circuit. Depends on the application, but if you had some obscure thing where you pierce the outer thing of a battery, it could actually short out. That was a big deal in the batterizer thing, but we won't get back in the batterizer. And it looks like it's just going to have a, yeah, a plastic on the top there. And you might think, well, if this case is, if this is all negative, it looks like it's shorted over to the positive. But, aha, uh -huh, it's not. If you get right in there, you should be able to see that there's actually a seal right around there. Don't want to get in with my knife because I'd actually uh, short that out, but these are discharged anyway. It looks like it does have a welded tab on the top as opposed to... <laughs> this one on the Energizer, which just flaps around in the breeze. And you might actually think that the insulation is around that bit there instead of under the lip, but you'd be wrong because if we actually measure that, you'll see that there's nothing. Oh, you'll see uh, there's nothing there, but if we probe the top part of it, bingo. By the way, if you're wondering how much you can uh, get out of, well, this particular energizer, others will be more, don't try this at home, kiddies. We actually don't blow our fuse. There we go, just over 10 amps, something like that. Ooh, let's start to get a bit of medieval on its ass. What do you think? Well, looky what we have here. <laughs> you can already see the space inside there. You can see some chemistry business happening down in there, but you can see an awful lot of wasted space, including vertical uh, space up the top here. So yeah, lots of volume wasted. No surprise there, given that this is 3000 milliamp hours versus the 8000 that you can potentially pack into this size from quite a few manufacturers. So it's at least half the volume gone. Now this is getting rather interesting, check it out. You can see that uh, there's this uh, plastic ring separator in there that actually keeps the actual cell right in the center. So there's all that, I, I haven't shifted that. So all that space in there, all that volume right around is wasted and that's why this one has such a low capacity. It, <laughs> yeah, you're getting really short change. Looks like they've got some tape. That, that would be just tape actually holding the uh, rolled construction because this will be multiple multiple layers and then they just roll it up to uh, form the cell itself and what stuff is inside here well it's nickel metal hydride but it's actually like a whole bunch of stuff the the electrolyte uh, inside which is an alkaline one it's usually uh, potassium hydroxide and that'll be installed in like a uh, woven like material inside there and then as far as metals inside are uh, a nickel metal hydride there's nickel obviously um uh, magnesium and aluminium cobalt uh, and weird stuff like lanthanum and neodymium and all sorts of like weird and wonderful mixtures and that will slightly vary uh depending on the manufacturer they've all got their own uh, secret sauce in there and you'll see that there's actually they're going to have a uh, pressure vent around here it looks like 
It's, I don't know if that's actually an O-ring, but there is like a rubber seal around there, and that's designed if the pressure builds up, if you short this thing out, or something else happens inside there, then to build up a pressure, it'll be, it could be exothermic, and you want the, uh, the top cap to actually release on that before they, you know, instead of having the whole thing explode, it's better to have it just go and just fizz out. How does that go? And you can see that the cell is actually attached to its own back plate on here. Don't know if it's, it seems to be stuck, but I didn't see any weld mark on there, but maybe it is uh, welded, it seems to be, because it's pretty permanently attached on there. But obviously they assemble that and then put the outer case in with that and then put the outer case in on top. And there you have it. That's the cell. So here's the, oh, no, there we go. We've got a tab on that. So there we go. There's our positive electrode down in there and just a tab goes up to the top. That's pretty much what you'd expect. And then the bottom, ah, you can see the roll. You can see the roll nature of it. So maybe we can unroll this puppy and see, but this is just tape to stop it, uh, to keep it all condensed and flapping around in breeze. You can already see the layers there. And you can see that obviously there was absolutely nothing to stop them from, in this case it's a Duracell, that there's nothing to stop them from, um, you know, at winding it all the way with LBJ and giving you the full capacity. And that's what you'd get inside um, this 8,000 milliamp hour one. Instead of being short changed and just getting like half the wrap in there, no wonder it's like less capacity because it, they're just skimping on cost, really. And they don't, these things aren't necessarily any cheaper than one of the uh, you know lesser brand names with the full capacity in them. And of course, this is why uh, these ones are much heavier than these, because they contain more of, of your cell, more of your battery. So we'll just slice that open there, and bingo, look at that. Oh, there we go, there we go. That's what's inside, ah, oh, with all that black stuff. I won't pretend to know the exact chemistry inside the Duracell. Duracell would have their own, oh, why is that? That looks slightly, slightly different, doesn't it? But it's gonna be uniform all the way. No, it seems to be sort of different in there. It's like it's eaten away somehow. There we go. Oh, look at that. So here's all our multiple layers, look at that. And there is our mesh, so there you go. That's effectively, that's four layers. I'm not sure if that's typical of um, all of them. I assume it, uh, assume it would be of all the different brands, but as I said, the chemistry will slightly differ between brands. Okay, so the layers we've got here, pretty obvious. Here's our negative electrode down here, and that's physically connected. That's, look, it's actually, it's part of is it like welded? To, uh, it, it could have been formed in the same thing, but it's actually part of uh, this inner mesh. So that is the negative electrode and that's wound all the way in. That's covered with the uh, secret source. And then we're gonna have a, oh, there's gonna be a separator here and a separator on the other side. So these two separators are keeping that from shorting out to this one, which is your positive electrode, of course, because you can see, see up in there that it actually connects through to the terminal. So, there you go, that's, oh, that's, that's pretty brittle, isn't it? Oh, my poor, my poor mat here, I should, that's actually a positive conducting electrode. A typical construction in a nickel metal hydride battery, they'll all be almost identical apart from the various uh, secret source mixtures uh, in them, they will have a positive and negative electrode wrapped around with a uh, electrical separator between them, and that's it. Now, sometimes in the positive terminal up there, they'll have a, uh, a like a PTC type element, a positive temperature coefficient element that will, if it, uh, it will increase resistance um, if the, of course, if the temperature. Uh, rises in it. So that's an additional safety measure, like an overcurrent uh, type uh, measure in addition to the gasket around there that would uh, 
globe. But yep, they've uh, they've skimped on the the. <laughs> the amount of uh, material in here and they just put in the plastic separator and this is probably exactly the same given that the new Duracell one this one we got here is 2200 milliamp hours but the new one is 3000 milliamp hours exactly the same as this so I reckon the Duracell have just gone and Energizer have just gone, oh, well, we're running one production line for the C and D. I uh, don't want to run another production line to, like, you know, cut them longer and do all that. Uh, so we'll just reuse the um, production line for the C to do the Ds. And, well, nobody wants, nobody uses high capacity nickel metal hydride D cells these days, do they? Ah, bleh, bugger that. So we'll just uh, use uh, the same exactly the same construction, exactly the same amount of materials as we'll do in a D-cell. I won't tear down the, D, uh, the C-cell here because it's obviously going to be exactly the same as this. And for those wondering, well, I don't see any like uh, metallic uh, grid, like, like metal mesh that we actually got in the negative electrode. So is this positive electrode, is that really conductive? Well, let's get in there and depends on where you put it. I have gotten it down, it depends how you do it, but yeah, there you go, one ohm, like it can be, like it's all over the shop, but it is a uh, low, it has to be low resistance, of, of course, and it's going to be the whole, not only the surface area, but the volume of it as well, but that is the positive electrode, but it's not, it's actually not a mesh, because it just rips like that, it's not the same, this one here is actually a metal, Mesh, you can hear that tear. See? So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that look at how Energizer and Duracell, and maybe others, if you know of other brands that rip you off with a low capacity like this, then uh, please let us know in the comments down below. And if you're after a good nickel metal hydride D-cell battery, make sure you get one of the high capacity ones like 8,000 milliamp hour or even uh, slightly larger you can get. They're the real deal and they're super heavy and they've got all the rolls in there to give you the full capacity. You don't want to be pissing away like, you know, two thirds of your capacity by buying one of these Energizer or Duracell. And I don't think they're any cheaper, are they? They might be, I don't know. I'm not going to go look at uh, prices and uh, stuff like that, but yeah, there you go, Duracell and Energizer. Is it actually a scam as such in quote marks? Well, it's kind of like a bit of a marketing scam because although it's it's they're, they're properly advertising on here and I have no doubt it'll be 2,500 milliamp hours at one uh, C at one, uh, the discharge rate of uh, 2.5 amps. The actual capacity depends on the curves uh, will actually vary. Um, but basically, I have no doubt it actually meets its capacity and it's printed on the front. You just have to know what you're doing. But they're obviously, uh, you know, marketing's kind of preying on the fact that, well, you're not going to care about the capacity. All you know is that you need a nickel metal hydride D cell for your, you know, farting novelty toy or whatever it is. And you're just going to go out and buy one and not actually caring about capacity of these things and what that actually means. Because, you know, Joe Public may not fully understand that. They, oh, they're going to know that 8,000 milliamp hour is better than 2,500 milliamp hour. It's because it's a bigger number, right? It's better. But they may not really, you know, know or care in the scheme of things and it's just one of those marketing things well Energizer and Duracell have decided well we can get away with just you know respinning our uh, C cell whacking it in a D cell case basically it's all they're doing here and uh, getting away with it so yeah don't like if you really care about capacity don't waste your money with these bloody Duracell and Energizer ones ridiculous get a, a decent one they're deliberately making them smaller inside and the rest of it is just air inside this thing so they know they know exactly what they're doing and they're doing it very deliberately Energizer and Duracell. Unbelievable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big yellow thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Yeah.